Bruchim Aboyim. The topic for today's thought is uh, smiling. And uh, it's amazing, but one can have more influence on people by smiling than any other forms of communication. Uh, we know the words from the heart go to the heart, and so to a smile. There's a saying that says that when you smile, the whole world smiles with you. When you frown, you frown alone. There's something about smiling that's a magnet for people. It's kind of a open door. It's a welcome mat. Uh, it makes people want to come closer. A frown, on the other hand, seems to make people want to distance themselves. And um, being an Orthodox Jew, we are really ambassadors of God. And if we walk around with a frown on our face, or even just a blank look, then we're really kind of normal. And that's what many people do. What throws people off is when they see people who are religious and they're smiling all the time. The truth is you can tell people to do all types of things, to put on tefillin, to pray, to acknowledge a God, to light candles, eat kosher, whatever, in one ear, out the other. But there's something about the eyes. There's something about the, the, the mouth turning up. And, you know, people, even when they send their texts with the smile face, it has so much meaning. Sometimes all you do is just send the face. And it says everything you wanted to say in a paragraph uh, with just a little picture. The, there's a prayer that we say on the Shabbat called Nishmas uh, Adam that said every Shabbos right after the Az Yashir. And in the prayer that said on Shabbat, there are many expressions of how to praise God. And it refers to the, uh, for only for the, even if we praise God as the melody of the sea and the waves, or as the expanse of the wings of an eagle, or being swift as a deer. But then what it says, which is very interesting, it says, even if our eyes were brilliant as the sun and the moon, we, are, we still could not thank you sufficiently, God. Which is strange. What does that mean? But how will we be praising God by having eyes as brilliant as the sun? And the answer given by Rampam is by showing him a happy and smiling face and serving him with joy and lightheartedness to the extent that everyone who sees us realizes, just like the sun and the moon, they are not lacking anything because of our attachment to God Almighty. And that really becomes the key. That it's not what you say, it's, it's, it's the attitude, it's the brilliance that you show. I mean, you can, people say so much with their body and how they act. The, in the Shema Yisrael, which is a um, acknowledgement of our attachment to God, accepting the yoke of heaven, and the first six words which most Jews know, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. In the, this acknowledgement of accepting the yoke of heaven, in the Hebrew, the first word Shema has a large ayin to it, and the last word, Echad, one, has a large dalit. Two words together spell the word aid, which is a testimony, a witness, and backwards spell the word dot to know. So again, this witnessing of this fact but if you take the other four letters that are left from the word Shema and Echad, spell the word Esmach, which means that I will be happy. So the only way that a person can really acknowledge this connection to God and accepting the yoke of heaven is really through a person's joy. In fact, in th when the second paragraph of the Shema begins with the word Vahoya, and if you will, and if you will listen to the words of God. So Moshe Feinstein says that in theory, the second part of the Shema should be superfluous. For if one already accepts the yoke of heaven, he's really accepted all the mitzvot. So why do we say the second part? And Moshe Feinstein explains that the Torah teaches us this section, the second part, to impress upon us that it is insufficient to accept the mitzvot as a yoke Rather, one should accept them with joy, for that is the only way that we can observe them completely 
and really make an attachment with God. You know, if someone does you a favor, but they do it with an attitude, then the truth of the matter is what you say to them is, do me another favor, don't ever do me a favor. And, but when a person does it with a smile, when you, when you give tzedakah, when you, when you help someone, when you do anything, everything that you do and you, that you do with a happy face makes a difference to the person you're doing it to. It is greater than anything. In fact, it says in Tehillim, in chapter 105, it says, Yismach leib mevakshi Hashem. Rejoice in heart those that seek God. And it's interesting that the word leib, heart, is also the first and last word of the Torah. First word in the first letter in the Torah is a base, bereshit. The last word in the Torah, the last letter in the word is Yisrael, Jew, Israelite. So yismach lev, that a person should rejoice in the Torah. How is that? Mavakshi Hashem, that's where you, those that seek God will find him. So if you're looking for true joy, true contentment, if you want something to smile about, look into the Torah. And there you'll find the answer to all your questions. And it'll take away any of the burdens that we carry around that stop us from smiling. But it also tells us something very essential. Sometimes people have a long face, are unhappy because they haven't succeeded in life. But the truth is, what the verse tells us, Yismach Lev, rejoice in your heart, not those that, that succeed, but Mavakshe Hashem, those that seek out God, not those that find Him. That as long as a person puts the effort in, as long as a person is on the road, as long as a person tries. Because the truth is, success is not ours. Success is something God gives us as a gift. This desire to search for him, to, to want him, becomes the main goal, the, mo the main drive that makes us happy. Being on the road, the journey is really what's joyful. In fact, it's interesting, if you talk to someone about their life, even look in the Torah as we use as our instruction manual. The truth of the matter is, the travel in the desert the Jews had. The Torah really only talks about the first year in a, in a couple months. And the last part of the, of the journey, the 40th year. The 38 years in the middle, there's nothing mentioned about. And that's our lives. Those things that just, just go about and just do their normal thing don't define us. It's just everyday doing things. What defines us is the tough times that we go through that we succeed in. And instead of being aggravated about it or being unhappy about it, know that when you talk to someone, that's what you're going to brag about. That's what's going to put a smile on your face after the fact. That's what's going to give you true joy and define who you are. So why only enjoy it when you finish? Why not enjoy it as Mavakshi Hashem when you're seeking out God, when you're on the road? That a person should also enjoy the moment and know that when I succeed and get through this, that it's going to make me better, going to make me stronger, going to make me happier. And why should I only be happy afterwards? Why shouldn't I believe that God will help me through it and walk around with that smile? If you know that God is always with you, imagine if a person had with him a friend, a father, who was the greatest, richest man in the world. He would always be happy knowing that that would be protection for him. That whatever he needed, that person would take care of. And that really should be our relationship with God. I, I don't know if we really realize it, but what a person should do is take a selfie. Nowadays, everybody has a camera with their phone. Take a picture of yourself, stone-faced as we are most of the time, and then smile. And look at both pictures, like two different people. There's something about putting on a light. When a person smiles, there's a radiance. There's a godliness that comes onto a person's face. And when people see, if only if all religious Jews, in fact, the word shalom, peace, if you take the shin and make it a sin, which we can do, and a vav is really a yud that's lengthened, and you move the letter just a little bit around, it spells the word smile in the English. So shalom is really a smile. 
that that peace of mind brings a smile to a person's face. And it's contagious. That when you see yourself and you look at that face, you see, wow, what a difference in how I look. And that welcome that to people. It's interesting, when I shake a person's hand, I always use two hands. Why? Because there's a warmth in not just shaking the hand, but holding the hand. And you give a person a, a feeling that you care, that there's a closeness. And that smile does the same thing. You know, it's an interesting thing that Hasidim have a custom of fabringen, which means that they have parties. They get together and they eat and they drink. And it's interesting, you don't see a lot of Hasidim that are drunk, but they do get, they do feel good and they do take a few drinks and feel higher and better physically. And there's, there was a, a, a misnagid who complained to a Hasidic rabbi. And he said, you know, we're in exile. How do you have the right to get together and have these parties? Don't you realize that we're in exile? The Messiah hasn't come and yet you're celebrating? And the rabbi answered him and he said he, that we have a a, a condition that a person can accept upon himself called a Nazir, a Nazirite. And the Torah tells us that the portion of the Nazirite comes right after the Sota, the woman who's accused of infidelity against her husband. And there Rashi tells us that if a person sees this ritual of the woman of it, of being tested, what he should do is become a Nazir. And one of the three thing conditions of a Nazir is not to drink wine. And then and 11 verses later, the Torah tells us that when the, this, this condition is, is over, the person has to bring a sin offering. Why? Rashi says, because he didn't drink wine. So the Hasidic master said to this, uh, this, this, this misnagin, that's kind of contradictory. First it says, don't drink, keep away from wine, and then you're bringing a sin offering for not drinking wine. Which is it? So he said to him, listen, if you see the world as a glass half empty, then you shouldn't drink wine. Because what wine does is it intensifies your mood. So for you, you should stay away from it. But if you see the world as a blessing, something that God has given us, something to be grateful for, something to smile about, then for you not to drink wine is a sin. And that's why the sin offering. And that's why Hasidim have fabrink. To elevate each other, to make each other feel good to come at the world with a positive attitude. Think good, it'll be good. Guess what, things aren't great? We say that if, in the end, we know that everything will be good. If it's not good, it's not the end. So keep going. You know, many times, success is the next step, the next corner. People that succeed, don't succeed necessarily because they're more talented. They don't succeed because they have a higher IQ. The reason why they succeed is they don't give up. That's where it comes from. And that should put a smile on your face to know that in the end it'll all be good. There was, uh, the Gemara talks about a rabbi in the Shuk who was in the park marketplace with, with Elion Novi, Elijah the prophet. And he said, who in this marketplace has a place in the world to come? And Elion pointed to two individuals. And when Elion, when Elijah left, the man was really confused because they didn't look very pious. They didn't have beards. They didn't look very religious. So curiosity, he walked over and he said to them, excuse me, what do you do? And they said, we're gestures. We make people laugh. We put a smile on their face. And they, they were the ones out of the whole marketplace that had acquired their place in the world to come. I make people smile and even better, make them laugh. And this becomes our job as ambassadors of God. We have an Achrayut that says in Masil Shisharim that a person's face is a public domain. It's not yours. You have to walk around with a smile to let everyone know that God is good and that God cares about us, God loves us, and in the end, everything will be good. God bless and thank you for coming. Have a great Shabbos.